Let's check under here. I am slightly worried about glue seepage. Let's go top to bottom. The top should be all right. Hello and welcome to another episode of the two week army vlog here on the Artist Opus channel. My name is Byron and we are taking a little bit of a break from our normal content of painting tutorials. This is a vlog of what I am doing in order to get an army prep fully basically in two weeks, but it's going to be essentially uh, six days for the painting of the army. <laughs> Oh, that's grim, isn't it? Anyway, we are going to make it. We are going to push through. Uh, we've got some cool stuff coming up. I am going to Element to pick up some goodies. Hopefully they make their way into the army. I guess we'll find out, won't we? Also, we're checking out our keeper conversion with Marathi's wings on, which is looking really badass, even if I do say so myself. I think that's probably one of my favourite conversions that I've ever done. And we're going to have a bit of a chat about keeping up morale in army painting, which is especially important when you don't have much time remaining. So. Stay tuned for all of that. Um, any questions at all, do let us know. We're here to answer them. Anything about products or the approach or, you know, going to tournaments, happy to answer anything on a, you know, any level really about that type of stuff. Thank you very much everyone for your input so far. It's been super helpful. I've had a few suggestions that have helped myself out personally on this quite a lot. We'll probably pop those into one of the upcoming episodes because we really do appreciate it. Thanks so much for your engagement. Please like, comment and subscribe. Hit that bell notification to make sure that you're notified for more in this series as they come out. And let's jump into some basing. Okay, so here we are at Element. Let's go and get some goodies. Oh, wonderful. Number one. And then we could buy a box of Chaos Knights or we could get a start collecting. Slaves to Darkness. Up top. There we go. Wonderful. We'll grab that too. We'll be good. It's another horribly sweaty day. This is looking pretty good. Let's uh, let's check under here. I am slightly worried about glue seepage. Let's go top to bottom. The top should be all right. Oh no, we are, we are, we are good. We are excellent there. Ah, we've had a little bit of capillary action, squidging the glue under the putty, but not too much. Wow, that is um, that is bonded incredibly, like. Look at that. That's why it's worth the faff, you know? I, I can I can pick this up by that while I paint it. I can drop it, someone can knock it over, someone's giant can fall on it. You know, if anything's breaking on this, it's that. It's not gonna be this. That's you know stronger than the rest of the model. So under and in here, um, we do have some significant gappage. Um I feel I should be using a dental tool for this or something. Um so there is a, a big old gap here which obviously doesn't fit with the build at all it's kind of under the armpit one of the armpits and it's hidden so i'm all right with that uh, this one however is is way out there i think maybe goes all the way through yeah it goes all the way through so we were lacking in contact points down there <sighs> you know it, it might just be easier it may be just more simple to like chop that off but then i'd have to do some sculpting like i did here so I really don't know which way I should go with it. What I do know that I'm going to do is get out my sander, see, you know, what angles we can work with. It's not ideal because of the wing, but it's not impossible. And we're just going to wear this one down a bit and smoothen it out. It's ended up slightly higher up the shoulder than this one and slightly less back on the other shoulder joint. So they're not perfect. They're not symmetrical. Um, but yeah, it does look pretty good. One thing I did want to test once this was done is what if, ooh, oh, are you kidding me? That would hide, that would hide a world of sins. Appropriate for Slanesh. <laughs> I don't know if that's just made my life harder or easier. Uh, pass. <laughs> pass, not a clue. Because I'd, I'd have to paint this separately. I'd want to paint it separately. I don't know if it fits over the tail and stuff like that. This is going to take some figuring out and obviously you know this is the type of thing that you probably shouldn't rush and I have no option but to rush at this point so yeah looking very cool though I am you know as pleased with this as I have been of, of, of any conversion that I've ever done so hopefully uh, there's a way for us to make all of this go together and work it out because look at that look at that presence that looks so badass and you know all about the drama slash aren't they 
and that is not lacking in it whatsoever. These are going to be my quick basing option. They will not be the final basing solution for the army at all. Certainly not with that combo of colours. They're going to be, I'll check them out. Um, these things are wonderful for dry brushing. Should be able to get something hyper efficient with them. Um, so yeah, we'll see how that goes. Now, this is quite important. From, you know, from the extraordinary and, uh, you know, completely special to absolutely mundane, I just need to see how Chaos Knights are to assemble. If they are difficult, um, they will not go in the army. As important as the sprues, let's just cut to the chase. How many steps per night? Ooh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Not awful, although we've got some stupid stuff going on with pieces. What is that? Are you kidding me? What on earth is the point in that? That is grim. I think I can separate this. See pieces like this here, if I want that shield separate, I think I can just cut here. So uh, let's go and find that bit and check it out. I don't foresee any other huge issues. Uh, legs. Oh my god, why would you do this? I, so I am, I am tempted to reverse my decision here. I do not enjoy minis like this. <laughs> why would you do that? Why? Nice head though. Some weird stuff here. What, you've got someone's calf joined there and their, their pelvis. Why not just have that separately? That seems utterly pointless to me. I know this gives you, you know, like a point to center it on and you can glue bits between bits, but for painting, it's just so nice to be able to have stuff separately. Ooh, which obviously we know we can do with a Vanguard just with one easy clip. I'm gonna have to think about that. Uh, that has, um, they are on the borderline, so I don't know which way to go. So we're gonna put that to the side and I'm gonna have a think about it while I get on with some other stuff, but um, that is a real shame. Oh well. For those of you wondering why I was so extremely annoyed about riders being separate and models having bits that join in, in my opinion, like stupid places, it is because in order to be able to do things efficiently, it's often really helpful if you can keep some bits completely separate conveniently, conveniently is the important bit there, um, in a way that you can just attach them afterwards having made them a different colour. And even if it's just the base coat, sometimes that can help you save a huge amount of time even if you don't change the base coat, it gives you the option to... Okay, let, let's think about Blood Knight. I painted the rider and the beast in somewhat similar ways, and I just used one more wash on the rider. Now, if you've got them separately, you could do that with one more dry brush, or you know, one more wash extremely conveniently. You could use the airbrush. You could do you know entirely different base coat, or there you know you could chip the steed but not the rider if you wanted the steed to look you know more war torn and the rider like he's maintained his armor. You could put freehand on one and not on the other. And it's, you know, it's just a really nice thing to have the option for. You could have purple riders and green horses, would not matter. Now it does matter. So if I use those models, it is going to affect the way that I approach my army. Now I want to have the option to use them at some point in the future. And that might be doable with a bit more time. I have no time. I have, you know, far too little time to be able to get this stuff done. So I'm going to have to make some clever decisions for the army now and hold in mind the army in the future when you know I'm not rushing around like a blue arsed fly going crazy. But I am doing that, so we have to make the decisions for the now. So you can have a think about that one. Can't make my mind up at all currently. I'm super pleased with the keep though. Like I I love I think that's probably the best looking thing I have ever converted. It looks wonderful. Uh Slanesh and Dark Elves going together is kind of thematic in an old school way as well. So really pleased with that. Let's just crack on with the stuff that we do know we're doing, so let's get on with a little bit more assembly and tweaking. Okay, so I'm going to take a moment to talk about morale in projects or times or in deadlines or, you know, however it is, uh, you know, specifically to do with the hobby. No life advice here. Maybe there are some grains of life advice, who knows. Anyway. I know myself quite well in this situation and everyone is different you know some people may need to see constant small amounts of completion being you know build a unit finish a unit build a model paint a model that type of thing other people may you know be robotic and just be able to be like i know i'm approaching this in the most efficient manner that's all good respect i'm jealous that is not me um i know myself very well and what i need 
So what do I mean by positive feedback loops? I mean um, that I need to be able to, that I'm always going to be working against, you know, like it's going to feel like a slog and uh, about 70, 80% of the bit through the slog, I need to reward, reward myself with something, you know, just when I'm getting to the, the, the inevitable dip in morale, you could either do them as loops or you could do it as waves. So like morale is good, finish something cool, peaching out, peaching out, peaching out. I need to pick me up. Here we go. Off we pop. Um, so, I'm aware now that I've got a load of stuff over to my left. The The keeper was kind of keeping me going because I'm really pleased with how that looked. But I'm waiting for a heat gun to arrive and I'm really worried about how that's going to go. Like I'm applying heat to, you know, one of my favourite bits of a model ever. Being the robes on the back of this lady and it's delicate and there's a decent chance that it goes a bit wrong. Um, so, you know, I'm just aware of that. I've also done a load of assembly. Um, so. I know for me at this point, I need to do something that's either completely mindless, um, but will happen fast, very importantly, so I feel like I'm making progression, or I need to put some paint on something or something that's just, just, just a bit different from gray plastic. The keeper was actually, it was converting rather than, you know, mandatory assemble in way X, Y, and Z building from instructions. It was a bit more creative, but you know, I, I am at a slump. So what I have, bases. I also absolutely, love basing. Ryan's gonna have to beat that, but uh, I like basing a lot. Loads. Like a huge amount. So I have some bases and that is what we're gonna do. Even if I just count up as many as I'm gonna need, clip them off their sprues and sand the edges, that's still something that I'm gonna have to do at some point. I'll pop on an audiobook, that will help a lot as well. And uh, we'll just slog through it and we'll get something done. I'm gonna put bases on the uh, the whiteboard so I get to take something off, you know. It's all about that. However arbitrary it seems, if it makes you happy, it's not a placebo, it will help because you need to be happy. Do let me know how you approach, you know, if you're in an army project, how do you guys keep your morale up? Do you work on feedback loops or, you know, the positive waves? Do you save up your favorite things? Do you start with your favorite things? I often wait until an, uh, an army's like 80% of the way there to do the basing because you, you suddenly get this big kick and things start looking a lot more finished and it kind of gets me across the finish line, but everyone approaches these things completely differently. So I'd genuinely be interested and I might need some of your advice as well. You know, if there's something there that I can take something from and helps me with this project, then that would be hugely appreciated. Yeah, it's got messy. Some people have commented that my desk looks organized. Um, I think it only looks organized after tidying. So let's get it back to that stage now and then we can crack on. There we go, all looking great. Even uh, cleaned out my water and refilled it. Not that I'm gonna be needing it, but you know, may as well make myself feel like we're about to be productive. So let's rock on. I have used these bases before, but it was quite a while ago and there is no replacement for you know, seeing the thing itself properly to help you make the best decision. So, they are nice. They are such a practical idea. Right. So, the wonderful thing about keeping things on sprue is this, basically. I need to do one thing to show you. It's just really, really practical to be able to do it like that. And these actually have quite, um, how to explain this. So a lot of bases, the joining points go significantly high up the base. Obviously these are, these are larger bases, so it's going to come less high, but it just means that it's quite easy to clip them off and get a, uh, a smooth clip. Um, they do have some seal lines here. So I think maybe the seal lines will be the deciding factor. I could paint them on, um, but I might be able to, I might be able to sand them while they are on sprue, potentially, unsure. Um, I don't think the seal lines are a big deal. And of course these are only temporary bases. So, you know, I could prepare them all nicely for dry brushing, catch any edges if needed and do them on or off sprue. Um, really don't know. I've never done them on sprue, but it is a very practical idea. Thinking Jade for these currently, uh, it's gonna be a pretty funky looking army. So um, maybe I just rock on on sprue, who knows? It would be nice to do some painting. In another episode of Byron is a Soppy Sausage Who Can't Read, we have an issue, but we're gonna be able to fix it. So 60 millimeter, this is a standard cavalry base, 90 millimeter, 
That is not the neck size up, being the size that the Varangard are on, which is for comparison. This is a 60, this is a Varangard, bigger. This is not a 90 day, I think this is a 75. So what we're doing is filling the gap and we're just making our own from the bits from the case. Uh, another Chaos Knights are on the same size basis as these. So, you know, just another thing to make me consider whether in fact I want to build those miniatures after having looked at their assembly instructions and the fact that I'd have to build a command group and stuff like that as well. So um, yeah, I have to build six of these if I'm going to do two sets of Vanguard and I have to build um, eight if I'm going to do more. And uh, it's not so much a, an issue of the time, but the ones like this I really like. I think that looks good. They're my favourite bits. But then the flat bits and the bases that look like this, I think they look a little bit lacklustre. These are far more cool and they fit with the oval a bit better, even though that is unrealistic and that wouldn't be how the floor would be. I, I still prefer the, the chunky bits. So yeah, good news though. Uh, heat gun has just arrived, so we can go and fetch that and then procrastinate because I'm scared about ruining my wonderful model. Wonderful. Okay, so we have three nicely made you know, like kind of cute, chunky looking bases, uh, exactly in my type of style. Um, and then unfortunately, this is what we're gonna have to use for the rest of them. So I'll have three good looking ones and three lower profile, less nice ones. I can't even make the most of the fact we've got corners and stuff because it's for ovals. So, oh well, it's what it is. We'll, uh, we'll get six done and then maybe we'll put some paint down on something. So I didn't actually mean to do this, um, but I think it's turning out quite nicely. So I put these bases together and then I realized that the units aren't gonna rank up. So what I'm doing is I'm just turning the base over and because these are the relatively flat ones, I'm just running my blade around a few times using the blade itself as, you know, a stencil basically. And uh, let me cross our fingers. Uh, it's thicker here, so I'll have to run through this one a few more times. But after, uh, after doing it a couple of times, the edge that I've got after sanding on that base is actually, you know, you could do it a little bit rocky on purpose, you know, still using it as a guideline for doing that or something. It's just quite a nice way to make sure that everything stays snug to the base and looks fairly neat. So yeah, useful discovery after a little bit more work because it is a thick one. Oh, there we go. Not a bad edge there. Scrape it a bit with a knife, sanding sponge. Do be careful of stuff like this because you know, that's just because I was an idiot. But yeah, it's uh, it's actually pretty convenient. So for those bases you can't get, these large, flat, thin pieces, ironically, I think are actually far preferable. Um, with these ones, I will probably have to do something a bit more aggressive, maybe get a hacksaw out or something like that. This, though, is uh, flexible and quite cool. So they have gone from my least favourite to actually, you know, a very good way. Even if I don't think they looked as cool, they match with these far better. Look at that. Way more similar. That actually looks, you know, really passable. So... I'll know what it is and where it fails and that this bit isn't quite perfect and all that stuff. But next to these, I think as far as blending in on a bigger level goes, they're great. Really, really good. Kind of obviously they don't make one for the keeper either, uh, but we have made one, which is pretty good actually. Uh, you might have seen that I got out some super gritty sandpaper there. Got out some 240, which has barely ever seen use. And I just used it to start off the edge. And I finished the edge, then I've actually got out my knife blade just to get a um, kind of a, a final smooth on these pieces. We're not going for incredible level, but you know, do you want to maintain that, that circular finish? One more section to go, I think. There you go. So, base for the keeper. Three Frangar bases. Ironically, the ones we've had to make are for the models that we don't have finished. <laughs> oh well. Don't know what that's a sign of. Anyway, this looks pretty good. You know, that is beyond um, the minimum level, I think, would be acceptable. And even if it's a rush job, I'll be able to use this for something else in the future. So, Pretty pleased with it. For those of you asking in the last episode, why didn't I pin it and why did I glue this together the way that I did? You'll notice it's no longer on its base. That was not of my choosing. I'm an absolute idiot and just knocked this off my table two feet plus onto a hard laminated wood floor and it bounced and broke off its base and doesn't seem to have 
any major issues, so I will uh, I will take that as a victory. Really lucky that it didn't land on a particular spine or something, and that they all seem to be good. There's a lot of pointy bits sticking out here. I think it bounced off its wings, and those wings have done their work really nicely. Oh, okay. One thing broke, so the bond from here to here broke. So, yeah, it's, it's bounced off a back wing. Anyway, the plastic bond has... Um, look at that. So, um, yeah, that is a victory of sorts, even if I am a clumsy idiot. All right, so I need a break from assembly. I've got to put paint on something before I go mad.